Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today we're going to talk about the Nera Rogue from Perrin. A solidly made slim 39 millimeter tool watch with some interesting aspects to it. One of which is that this watch's design is at least partially inspired by Jody of Just One More Watch. And if you go watch his review of it, he'll talk more about it. But the short version is that this is basically a version 2, an update of the original Nera. Jody reviewed that original watch, and for this update, Perrin went back and listened to his suggestions. Which is a good example of what's really great about microbrands, that the brand owners are actually listening to what people are saying, and that they're not some giant corporate monolith who never listens to anyone else outside their own walls. Another interesting aspect to the Nera is that it is an homage, but before you change the channel, it's an homage in a good way. As its inspiration comes from the TR-900 of the 60s, a pretty rare diver that was actually made for the US Navy. Although, as you can tell, Perrin took that inspiration and kind of went their own way with this one. And lastly, while these watches are Swiss made, Perrin considers itself to be a Swiss Transylvanian brand. Hence the cheeky logo made up of vampire fangs. I'm not sure if they're actually based out of Transylvania, but I do know that the brand's owner's family originally came from there. Now, before we really take a bite out of this one, I do need to let you know that this watch was provided by Perrin, and as far as I know, they're not going to ask for it back, hence the promotional tag at the beginning. That said, let's move on to the specs. The Nera Rogue is a smaller diver at 39mm wide, but proportionally it has a longer lug to lug at 49, all thanks to these really long slender lugs, which give you plenty of clearance to wear this on a wide variety of straps but I think it also makes the watch wear a tad larger. So ideally, while this is a 39, I think it's more suited to someone who prefers 40 millimeter. Total thickness is 12.9, and that is decent for a 200 meter diver. And that includes a flat sapphire with AR, as well as a closed screw down case back. The Nera Rogue also has a pretty solid build, with a weight of 94 grams on its leather strap, or a hefty 170 grams with its bracelet. And all of this is then powered by Swiss Solita SW200. The case of the Naren is 316L stainless, with an entirely blast design that extends out to these narrow lugs. Overall, it's a fairly straightforward design, and in many ways that sets the tone for the entire watch, letting you know right from the get-go that this is a straight tool watch. Although it is one with some unique and quirky twists. At the right, you have a blast design screw down crown which is a nice balance between a usable size and one that doesn't distract too much from the case. Flipping the watch over, you get a glimpse of the closed screw down case back, which once again is all business. There's no frills here or any sort of crazy design. Yet, I think this is the most organized case back I've ever seen when it comes to getting information off it. And that's something I really appreciate. Back to the front, let's talk about the bezel. It's a steel bezel with a black PVD plating, which gives it added grip, as well as it helps it stand out and look great against the dull blasted backdrop. The insert is also stainless, but it does have a titanium nitride coating, as well as a very minimal design. I mean, if you're someone that completely hates Arabics on a diver, then this one's really for you. The action itself is also great. It's 120 click, unidirectional, no backplay, with a great clicky sound and feel as you turn it. Moving on to the dial, we see that it's a dark matte green. And there does seem to be a bit of space here between the dial and the crystal, which I think gives the watch some added depth, even though the dial design itself is rather flat. The Nera is also equipped with a set of printed indices, as well as a printed chapter ring in white right at the outer edge. And this is where it meets a tall yet subtle black insert that bridges the dial and bezel. The hands here are simple swords, yet they are well executed. They're diamond cut metal covered in a white paint. And in case this hasn't become apparent yet, this is a watch with a ton of contrast. The long narrow white hands as well as the white indices boldly come through against the green dial, ensuring you can read this in a variety of situations. Over at the three we have the date, which does break up the symmetry. Yet the color match date wheel blends into the design keeping that date ready, but giving the watch an overall straightforward and clean feel. Overall, Perrin did a great job with the design. The elements that need your attention come through distinctly and clearly, while those that don't are still apparent when you want them, but subtly blend into the background. 
Really, the only element that I think some people may have an issue with is the branding. Maybe for those that take their watches really seriously. And at this price, maybe you should take it seriously. And for them, the Vampire Fang branding might just be too goofy. Yet for me, it's something I like. It's fun, quirky, and goofy. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know that's what I tend to gravitate towards. Don't get me wrong, I love a serious, straightforward design. But I still think there's room in this world for the oddballs. For such a small watch, it's really amazing how large this dial feels. It's a straight-up tool watch, and there is a sense of familiarity when you look at it. Yet, at the same time, it's not exactly like anything you've ever seen before. And I think the quirkiness here is something that really draws you in. As for the loom, well, for a diver, overall I'd say it's okay. In my comparison test, the printed indices on the dial fade out fairly quickly. But the hands, as thin as they are, stay in it a bit longer, fading out just a little bit before my Seiko Turtle. So again, I think it's just okay, but it's not quite Seiko good, and I think that's the standard most micro brands should really aim for, if not try to exceed. Although, hang on one second and check this out. There, up at the 12, what's going on with the bezel? That is some really good loom applied to it. So ideally, whatever Perrin is doing there, they just need to do with the rest of the dial. Movement-wise, we are looking at a Swiss Lita SW200, and I think most people would agree that it's a great movement. The only trick is if it's priced right with the watch, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. With regard to the straps and bracelets, there are a couple of options at checkout. Perrin provided me with two, a vintage leather as well as their standard bracelet. Between the two, and maybe you can tell this already, but I vastly prefer the leather strap. It's a good quality leather, and once it's broken in, it's pretty comfortable. But the reason I'd recommend it here is just because I really didn't care for the bracelet. Now, I know some of you out there are hardcore bracelet fans, and you're going to buy it regardless of what I say here. But my recommendation would be to hold off. Just get it with a leather strap and save yourself some cash. Because simply put, I just don't think it's on the same quality level as the watch head. First off, it's a completely different finish. It's brushed and in my eyes creates a huge clash when it's sitting next to the blasted case. Then it has male end links, and this creates an even longer effective lug to lug on a watch that's already a little long, and I think that does hurt wearability. Then some of the edges are also pretty sharp, as well as the fit of the end links into the watch head is not the best. There's a little bit of a gap, but more than that, it's just wobbly. On a cheaper watch, you'd expect a cheaper bracelet, and that might be okay. But here, at this price, this isn't necessarily okay. And perhaps what's worst of all is I just think it's boring. It's a standard brushed oyster style bracelet, which these days is kind of generic. And I think it's too generic to be putting on a quirky creative watch. My recommendation is to remake it as a blasted H-Link bracelet, and one with female end links. Pushing that pure tool watch design and taking full advantage of the watch's comfortable size. I mean, on the bracelet, on the wrist, it's not bad. But on my 7.25 inch wrist, it does feel a little long, and I think there is a little bit of overhang with those male end links. Yet, take it off that bracelet, put it on a nice strap, and I think it becomes more comfortable with a cooler presence. And lastly, let's talk value. Perrin is currently selling this for 595 Swiss francs for the strap and 665 Swiss francs with the bracelet, which translates to 622 and 695 US respectively. With my gut reaction to this being that it's reasonable, but still a little on the high side. I mean, it is a unique design and these are ready to ship. This isn't some sort of Kickstarter. So there is justification here for that. Yet at the same time, competition in this price range is pretty fierce, some of which have some upgraded components to it, such as the Wise Watches Adamascus 88 with 904L steel, or the full titanium Resolute Super Compressor, both of which are the same price as the Nera. So while the watch is within reason, I think it's pretty hard to say you get a lot of bang for your buck here. That said, if you're looking for a smaller diver and one with a straight, no-nonsense tool watch vibe, then this is one I would recommend. There is a little room for improvement, and particularly with the loom and the bracelet. 
Yet at the same time, while it is unusual, I appreciate that it's a straightforward, clean design. One that's both eye-catching and highly usable, creating an ideal balance between form and function, which these days can be a pretty rare combination. Anyway, as usual, let me know what you think of the Perrin Narrow Rogue down below, or if you can think of any other sub 40 millimeter dive watches, I'd love to know your thoughts as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, you all know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.